Hey, what's up guys? It's Rick with the Digital Divide, and today we're going to do a quick look at the game Starfield. This game is amazing so far. I just started it today and it's so good. So I wanted to kind of show you just the intro because I don't want to give away any spoilers. This is the same team that brought us Skyrim and Fallout, Bethesda Studios. These guys are absolutely legendary and they were recently acquired by Microsoft a few years back, which was one of the smartest things that Microsoft has ever done. So without further ado, let's jump into this and take a quick look. Now, we're going to go ahead and launch the game, and I want to give you an idea not only of what you can expect from the gameplay, but also how you can expect the game to run, depending on the hardware that you have. Now, I, I consider my gaming rig to be like a mid-range gaming rig. It, it's not low end at all and it's not the most high end it's right in the middle so i'm working with the a ryzen 7 5700x which is an 8 core 16 thread cpu and i've got that paired with 32 gigs of uh, ram and then i've got uh, an nvidia rtx 3070 and with those specs in mind this is these are the settings i'm going to use so I'm running with an output of 4K resolution, and instead of going to ultra, because this is a relatively demanding game, I'm just gonna set everything to high. It doesn't need to be on ultra. And this game utilizes uh, resolution scaling via FSR2. So I'm gonna set the resolution scale to 85% of native 4K, and I'm gonna set everything just on high, flat out high. I'm gonna turn off VRS because I'm not a fan of it, and I'm gonna, turn off film grain because I'm also not a fan of that, but everything else I'm going to leave on and I'm going to leave it on high with the exception of motion blur because I, I like to have that set to, to medium, uh, otherwise the effect can be a little bit overwhelming. And we're going to jump into this game and, and check it out and see how it runs. And again, I'm running on a, a 3070, which I think is a mid-range GPU. It does support DL. SS, which unfortunately this game does not support, but FSR2 is actually pretty good, so um, I'm expecting decent results here. And again, I'm running at 85% of a native 4K, and we'll see what happens here. I'm loving the music already. I I'm a sucker for orchestral composition, just anything involving uh, instruments working in, in sync is, is just beautiful when it comes to gaming. It gives it like a grandiose kind of movie-like vibe almost. It elevates it above your traditional video game uh, fare. Alright, so this is the intro. Already, <laughs> this is a massive leap over any previous Bethesda game. Just looking at the... the geometric complexity of this girl's face and the animation on her her lips the voice syncing it is just miles ahead of anything that bethesda has done in the past uh, bethesda software is an amazing uh, software developer but they're known for having kind of an antiquated uh, graphics engine that is full of bugs and, and quirks but their games are excellent overall and fun fact these guys I mean, as the name implies, they're called Bethesda Software, and they're located in Bethesda, Maryland, which is uh, right down the street from me. It's about a 40-minute drive, so um, I've been a fan of all, of all of their games in the past, but this one is the first one that I think I've ever played it and felt like it was modern when it comes to a visual perspective. There's a lot of stuff on display here that is just leaps and bounds over anything that they, they, they put out in the past and a lot of that has to do with the fact that one of their one of the companies that they own is id software and id does doom and wolfenstein and id actually helped them with the graphics on this game and that i think that paid off in spades because it looks amazing already the voice acting is terrific um so it looks like you're we're starting off here in a mine shaft and i'm getting a lot of uh vibes from a game that came out a long time ago called red faction i don't know if any of you guys remember that game i think it originally released on the playstation 2 and pc and it was followed up by sequel red faction 2 which i liked quite a bit but yeah i'm, I'm getting vibes from that and also a little bit of half-life a little bit we'll see where this goes this is my first playthrough uh, of this intro sequence, so I don't know what to expect. Keep your breathing steady, and never take that helmet off down here. 
Oxygen processors don't extend this far. All right, so it looks like they're mining for resources. Those lasers remind me of No Man's Sky, which was a game I did not like. Uh, but this one, so far, the atmosphere is amazing. Like, I'm super into it. I'm really liking the shadows and the lighting effects so far. The texture work is really good, although it is a little bit weird that there wasn't any kind of option in the graphics menu to adjust the textures. And that's really important depending on how much uh, VRAM your GPU has, because a lot of people are going to be running this on GPUs that have 8 gigs of VRAM um, or less. So, you know, that, it's kind of odd that they omitted that in the graphics options, but you know, the game's running beautifully and, and the textures don't seem to be suffering at all. They look really, really good so far. Alright, so, so far it looks like the game starts off, you're on a moon, and you are mining for resources, and there is an object hidden behind this machine that's burrowing through the wall that you're here to find. Um, and I imagine that's going to kick off the whole story. So we'll see where this goes. Oh, cool. I get my first weapon. It is a mining laser. And again, the mining in this game reminds me a lot of... Um, no Man's Sky, although No Man's Sky was so simplistic, this is a bit more refined, I think, already. Um, and we'll see. It looks like there's a couple points of interest here that I'm meant to mine, and then that'll kick off the next story beat. But I'm really digging the atmosphere so far. It's, it's really cool. The graphics really pull you in, and, and that was one thing that I did not like about No Man's Sky, because the graphics were horrible. I mean, they were just... I mean, I guess they were okay for the PlayStation 4 era, but e even, even with that perspective, they were super basic. And I know it's a small team, and I know they had a lot of difficulties during development, but this is already just a massive improvement, it seems, on that concept at least when it comes to the mining. All right, so it looks like we're breaking through this wall and this is where we're gonna find the artifact that we're looking for, which apparently only the supervisor here, um, Lynn, knows about. Everyone else is kind of just going with the flow. But uh, we'll see what this is. Uh, not if you consider a spike in gravity readings a problem. I don't. You don't? What we're after, it'll read as an anomaly. That's what I was told anyway. Okay, now you're starting to freak me out. Relax. It's just another job. Come on. We're getting close. I think. Yeah, everything is just... Something goes wrong in there, we'll come get you. Uh, why would anything go wrong? Would you shut up? Both of you do your jobs. Client is on his way. All right, it looks like this is gonna be our anomaly. I don't know why they'd send the new guy in here to retrieve it if it's that important, but you know what? That's how video games work. You're you're the star of the show, so it doesn't need to make sense all the time. <laughs> and here we go. It looks like a bunch of floating cubes of some sort. Don't know what I'm looking at here, but uh, it looks like I can't mine it. I'll just walk up to it and see if I can grab it. Well, that's weird. I'm getting a lot of Half-Life vibes here. You're getting, like, 
A bunch of weird visions of alien planets, seemingly. Hey, come on. Come on. Okay, take it easy. You were out cold. Uh, no physical damage. Mentally, the jury's still out. You know who you are? New recruit for Argos Extractors? Ring any bells? Any of this look familiar? Alright, so it looks like we're jumping into the character creation mode. And again, the character models, the subsurface scattering on the skin, the texture work, the hair work looks so much better uh, in this game than anything that Bethesda has done in the past. I mean, this is, this is miles ahead of anything... Um, from a visual perspective that they've done, it's 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 just a huge leap. It looks like a current generation game, which is not something you can say about a lot of their releases uh, previously. But they've refined this engine to the point where it, it it actually looks and runs quite well. So it looks like there's a bunch of pre-made heads. This girl with the pink hair is kind of cool looking. Uh, I'm gonna I always try to make a character that looks somewhat like me. Uh, so I'm gonna see if I can find someone with a face that is like a base level of something I can work with and modify. This this guy looks like he could work, maybe. I just got to change a few things because I don't have blue eyes or light brown hair. Uh, I have darker features. So I'm going to go ahead and use him as a base, and then I'm going to modify it accordingly. Let's see what kind of hairdo. Ooh, I like this one a little bit. Looks nice. Let's see what else they got. Definitely not me. Yeah, that's not for me. He's got a little man bun back there. Uh, yeah, now I think I'm going to go back to the, the first one. Uh, this one. This one I like quite a bit. All right, so we need to make the hair black because that's pretty much me. I'm I'm getting old at this point, so I've got black and gray. It's a salt and pepper look going on right now. I'm going to change the eye color because I definitely do not have blue eyes. And also the facial hair, i got to make this somewhat look like me. So... Uh, this guy's a lot younger than me, that's for sure, but uh, let's make the facial hair. I got a little bit of a, a beard going, but it's just mostly stubble. Let's see if we can find something. Uh, this one looks pretty good, I think. Eh. Yeah, this looks good, too. I like the mustache. I, I wish I could rock that kind of a mustache, but sadly I can't. Ooh, Wolverine. We got the Wolverine look going on. Oh, this one's good. Yeah, I like that one. I think I'll stick with that one. And then we'll just, I'll keep the eyes the way they are, but I'll change the eye color because, again, I don't have blue eyes. I wish I did, but I don't. Oh, they've got some Darth Maul eyes that you can set, apparently. I've got, like, a light brown thing going on with my eyes, but in direct sunlight, they almost look green or hazel. But uh, let me see if I can find something that's close. This, this one's probably good. Yeah, no, no, that's a bit too light. This one, this one's probably perfect right here. And then I'll change the eyebrows a little bit because a uh, little bit too feminine the way they were originally. Uh, this this is good. We'll, we'll keep it like this, I think. I mess around with the ears a little bit. So, I mean, this is this is mostly me except 20 years younger than I currently am. So <laughs> this is like me when I was like 20 years old. Uh, man, the the facial animation and... and level of detail that you get out of this new graphics engine is really impressing me so far. All right, I'm going to I'm going to get some plugs. There we go. Some ear plugs cuz I, I have those in real life, so like a low gauge ear plug. Yeah, that that's this works right here. Ooh, scars. Add some scars on here so he doesn't look too much like a noob. What do we got? Oh, that's too much. That's too little. Let's see if we can find something in the middle here. Ooh, they got the Joker mouth thing going on. A bunch of weird facial scars and burn marks and what have you. That's super weird looking, but uh, interesting to see in a game. Uh, we'll, we'll stick with the classic eye slash. Uh, and then tattoos. Ooh, I like this. It's like a space cat. I, I have a cat, so this works. 
another cat themed one. It's odd that they're focusing so much on cats. Uh, this one's kind of cool. I like the next stuff going on. The little phoenix there. Uh, it's too much, too much, way too much. Yeah, I don't know about these. I this I think the one with the neck. I mean, the cat one is tempting because it's adorable, but uh, yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't know. I think I might. Well, let's 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 move on to the body first, and then I'll, I'll go back to the tattoo. So let's super muscular, super thin, super fat. Um, you know, I, I think I'm just gonna put this square in the middle just, you know, to make things simpler. Uh, I don't really need to go that in-depth when it comes to the body. Most of this is played from a first-person perspective anyway, so you're not going to see your character unless you play from the third person, which I don't tend to do in Bethesda games. I traditionally will play these in the first-person perspective. So this is your attribute screen. So you have to pick a, a class, essentially. The first one is Beast Hunter, and you can see that there's perks that go with all of these. Um, but first, I'm going to jump back in and, and pick a tattoo because my guy looks a little bit too green for me. So I need to toughen him up a little bit. Let's let's go. I'm going to go with the neck tattoo, I think, because this is too much. Yeah, I don't like the stuff all over his face, but like a little bit. Yeah, this 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 is fine. I like this. Combined with the scar, I mean, he looks like he should be the lead singer of an emo band or something, but whatever. So now we're back to the background, and, and this is, you know, depending on the class that you pick, it's going to give you some attributes. So this this one here, Beast Hunter, gives you fitness, ballistic, and gastronomy, or, sorry, gastronomy uh, attributes here, and you can read each of these. And wow, there's a lot more than I would have expected here. Uh, Beast Hunter, Bouncer, Bounty Hunter, uh, Chef, Combat Medic, Cyber Runner, there's just so many. I'm just going to scroll through these and see which perks I want to start off with. I'm not really a stealth guy, so I'm going to skip the Cyber Runner. Diplomat is not my thing either, although the Persuasion perk is typically very useful in these kind of games. Gangster, not for me. Uh, homesteader, Industrialist, Long Hauler. Ooh, file not found. This oh, this one's actually pretty good. The so if you don't pick a, a super defined class, the starting skills, wellness, ballistics, and piloting, all three of those are super useful. Um, so I think I'm gonna go with that. Actually, it's either that or the beast hunter. I think based on the perks that I've seen so far. Let me jump back over to beast hunter just to confirm again what those perks were: fitness, ballistics. Gastronomy, I don't really care about, so I'm, I'm going to go with the File Not Found. Uh, Ronin is okay also, although I'm not really a stealth person, so I'm just going to do File Not Found, which is uh, not sticking to a specific backstory. You're kind of a, you know, a mysterious character. Uh, it looks like this is optional. You can pick traits. I'm definitely an introvert in real life. <laughs> Uh, it looks like, though, that each of these comes with a significant downside. So you get some kind of a perk here, but then you also get uh, limited in other respects. So I don't know that I want to use any of these, actually, because I don't want to deal with any negative buffs right off the bat with my character. So if these are optional, I'm just not going to pick any of them, I think, because, yeah, this, this one here... It, it makes you uh, use less oxygen when you're alone, but when you're adventuring with other humans, uh, you use a lot more, it looks like. So I don't, you know, the, the perks are cool, but I don't, I don't want the negative side effects, so I'm going to skip these. I'll just enter my name here. Well, you got the sample. Client's on his way, then we all get paid. You remember anything that happened? It's our payday, that's what. Sooner we get it off our hands, the sooner it isn't our problem anymore. Huh. Well, makes the paperwork easier, and we got what we were looking for. 
All this trouble for that stupid thing? Huh. Sure don't look like much. Never mind. And again, I'm just going to show you the very beginning of this game, like the first 20, 30 minutes or so, because obviously I don't want to ruin anything for you and I don't want any spoilers. I'll continue to play, but I'll stop recording after the beginning here. So this is my dude. You can switch from third person to first person. Um, and already I can tell that they put a lot of time into the animation quality in third person perspective because with games like Skyrim, it was definitely an afterthought. The, it was super janky whenever you played in third person. This looks like a more, a much more viable option if you're into that. And I usually am. Like for big adventure games, I like playing in third person. Like God of War is a great example, but Bethesda games I like to play in first person. Uh, although, again, it looks like they put a lot more work in and polish into the third-person perspective uh, viewpoint in this game. So maybe, maybe I'll switch it up every once in a while. All right, Dusty. Airlock. Put your helmet on. All right. So how do I equip a helmet? She wants me to put on a helmet. Uh, this doesn't look like it's it. This is my missions. I'm not seeing anything that says inventory. Uh, I don't know what I'm missing here, but clearly I have to put on a helmet. I just don't know how. Let's go back to my inventory screen. Maybe there's something I missed. Oh, there it is. It just pops up, but it doesn't... That's really dumb, actually. So it, do, it doesn't say inventory until you hover your mouse above it. Uh, but that's where it is, so I'm going to go ahead and put on my helmet so we can move on to the next part of this beginning intro sequence here. I'm really loving the music, man. The, the ambiance in these games is so cool. They, they, Bethesda does such a great job of build, building like a building worlds and, and building, building an atmosphere that is believable. All right, I, I hear something, but I don't see anything in the sky. I hear a ship, but I don't see one. Yeah, I don't, I don't see anything. Oh, there it is. Okay. Interesting. This ship looks really cool. I think this is going to be your starting ship. I think. That guy just walked straight past me, didn't even acknowledge me. How rude. Barrett? Man! Been a long time. <laughs> yes, it has. That mine on Bendy, right? Oh, that's cool. He's got a little robot companion. Vasco is his name. God, the detail. Look at his little eyeball thing. There's like all the text around and everything. It moves. It's so cool. I, man, they really, they really polished the hell out of this game. Uh, which explains the delay because this was supposed to come out a few months ago and they, they gave it some more time for polish, which I think was the right choice based on what I'm seeing. It, it looks really clean so far. No bugs, no major issues that I can see. It's running really well on my 3070. <laughs> that fun, huh? Not the most gentle push into the great mysteries of space, but hey, been there. Look, just hand over the credits and I'll be happy to never see this thing. Or you ever again. That's why I like you, Lynn. All business. Barrett, the scanners on the frontier. Uh-oh. Another ship's coming in hot from orbit. This isn't going to be good. Alright, so it looks like we're getting into our first combat sequence. Although I don't have a gun. I only have my laser miner. I guess I can use that. Oh, here's a gun. Yeah, okay. Right. Of course there is. Oh, okay, these are the bad guys. How do I switch to my pistol? I'm 
scrolling my mouse wheel up and down, which is how you do it in 99% of other games, but it's not working here. It's just changing the perspective. Oh, here's my mining laser, but how do I get to my gun? Let me check the control bindings here. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. I'm, I'm gonna skip through this for the sake of time, guys. Okay, so after some tinkering, I figured out that you have to go to the inventory uh, menu here and manually equip the gun. And man, look at the, the texture work on this gun model. It looks so clean. That's really, really impressive. They, they really stepped it up here with the creation engine. All right, so let's get into some combat. All right, I have to change some control settings here because for some reason the second mouse button doesn't zoom in, which is normally the aim button and every other first person shooter, but it is not here. Oh, now it is, okay, cool. All right, so combat feels great so far. Again, all I have is this dinky little pistol, but so far I'm loving it. I really like the design of these, the space, the space pirate uh, uh, spacesuits look pretty cool, I think. The animation is really good too. Not only reloading, but when you shoot these guys and the way they fall down, it's, it's really, really nice looking. Alright, so I think that's everyone I've killed, so now I'm going to loot all their dead bodies for weapons. Let's see what goodies I can find. Oh, here's a... A nice automatic rifle and whatever I can find I'm just gonna grab everything off of every corpse here because I'm sure I whatever I don't use I can sell at a vendor eventually maybe who knows all right I think that's everyone so the icon wants me to head back over. I'm gonna, but first I'm gonna switch to the new fancy rifle that I picked up, and then I'm gonna head back over to the spaceship. Of course, Barrett. Well, that was some fine work on the pressure. You dug up the artifact, right? That means you saw it. The vision. This guy seems to know quite a bit about these the, the artifact that I picked up, despite the fact that apparently no one's seen one before, so that doesn't make any sense, but hey, uh, I digress. I wasn't gonna bring it up, but we don't exactly know what the artifact might have done to your head. Okay, so this guy's trying to get me to go be part of his group called the Constellation. Apparently they know about the artifact and can help me because apparently touching it messed with my head, I guess, or something. I think that's what he's trying to say. How about I stay and I send your Dusty here in my place? I, I, I know, I know, but he's not some miner anymore, Lynn. Soon as he touched that rock, something changed. Don't tell me you can't feel it. Fine. It's a deal. All right, so she's agreed to let me get on a ship, and he's going to stay here, and we're going to swap places. That sounds a little bit odd, but whatever. I'm, I'm here for it, so let's, uh, let's get on the ship. I guess he's giving it to me. Vasco, get him to the lodge. No deviations unless absolutely necessary, okay? Protocol Indigo. Indigo. Again. Oh, and I get to keep his little robot dude also. And he's giving me a watch. So this watch, you actually get, if you buy the collector's edition of the game, you get a real-world version of this watch, although I don't think it's worth the cost, because I think it's like 300 bucks for the 
the, the most expensive version of this game, and it comes with the replica of the watch, but it's not even touchscreen, and it, it's very That's limited in what it can do, but it's still kind of cool. And I wonder if it interacts with the game at all. Since you can tell Constellation about that vision you had. And Vasco, don't let him break my ship. All right, so I'm headed off to my new ship with my new robot buddy. And we'll check it out, see how the interior looks. Maybe do a little flying. Okay, this is kind of cool looking. There's all kinds of stuff here. This looks relatively like... I know this takes place way into the future, but the technology on display here looks like something that could exist today. So, that's cool. It looks like you can research things um, when you gather enough components to upgrade your ship, is what I'm guessing. Yeah, helmet mods, and at the bottom there it tells you required materials, so yeah. I, I assume that eventually throughout the gameplay I'll be able to upgrade all kinds of stuff, but let's head into the cockpit and check it out. Alright, it looks like we're gonna head into space. From what I understand, this is not seamless, like No Man's Sky, so it is a loading screen, which is unfortunate, but I don't, for me personally, that doesn't break the immersion, having this, you know, uh, pre not pre-rendered, but uh, this little cutscene here while it's loading in the background, it's super cool to me still, so. I'm loving all of this so far. Alright, so we're in space now, and I got my first achievement, and we're flying around. Now guys, I don't want to get too much further into the game here on this video, because I, again, I don't want to spoil anything for you, so I just wanted to show you the beginning intro of this game, and so far I'm absolutely loving this game, but this is my kind of game, like 100%. I love sci-fi, everything, I, space exploration, RPG mechanics. This game was pretty much made for me. Um, oh, this is cool. You can go into a star map, and then you can see the galaxy that you are currently in. And I guess I can travel to all of these planets, I guess. I'm not going to do that now, though. I think I've reached the point of... Uh, I think I've reached the point where I'm ready to end this little demo, but I am, you know, I'd love to hear what you guys think so far based on this little intro, what you think of the game. If you're playing it, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think of it. Let me know what your specs are if you're playing it on a PC and how well it runs, because I've heard mixed reactions from people. Again, I'm running on a 3070, and as you can see, it looks like it's, I mean, it's running great uh, to, to my eye, but... Uh, you know, let me know if you have uh, an older card, how it's running for you, or, or even if you have a newer card, I'm, I'm interested in hearing. Um, you know, I'm going to put so much time into this game. I, I'm only, you know, I just started, I'm only a few hours in, but... Um, I just started the game, so I'm, you know, by the end of today, I'll be, you know, maybe two or three hours in, and from what I hear, it's like a 50, 60 hour game just to complete the main story quest quest and that doesn't include like side missions and what have you so that's going to do it for me today guys as always thank you for watching have a great day